A spectacular way to start the day. Last night I checked the weather forecast and it said fog. Woke up this morning and a thick layer of fog outside the window so I got super excited and I've come down to one of my favourite places locally, Hardcastle Crags. This place, no matter what time of the year, is absolutely stunning. Sadly the sun actually rises and gets into the valley quite early and I underestimated just how much it penetrates down into the valley so actually most of the fog is already gone i've already had the drone up this morning having a look it does seem to be a little bit in there so i'm hoping to try and get in do a little bit of woodland photography and then hopefully maybe get a little bit of separation with the mist but if that doesn't work out i'm still in one of my happiest places so it doesn't matter i'm happy to be out i'm happy to be in hardcastle drag so stick with me and let's see what we can find I highly recommend that you check it out. It is an absolutely beautiful woodland area just on the outskirts of Heaven Bridge. It's about a two mile walk. Most people drive here and there is a car park located at the top and the top end, far top end near Blake Dean. But more than anything, it's just a beautiful place to explore and have fun. Bring your children, bring your dogs. Can you bring dogs? Yeah, I think you can bring dogs. But for a photographer, it offers so much opportunity, so much exploration, and that's why I've come here today. Not just because of the weather, but because it's one of my favorite places to visit, and every time I'm here, it makes me happy. So I'm debating at the moment whether or not to just take my time, but when I took my drone up when I first got here, I did notice quite a lot of mist and fog on the far back where Gibson Mill is. So I'm umming and ahhing whether or not to just beeline for there and see if I can find something or whether or not to just take my time and just enjoy being here. So it's, it's a bit of a tricky one this morning. I'm not 100% sure what I should do, but for now I'll just walk. But if I see something that takes my eye, then maybe, maybe I'll just stop and see if I can do a composition or find a composition. But I think I will just head up and see what I can find. As I was coming up these stairs here, I noticed this branch and it's covered in moss. Now I'm a sucker for woodland photography and when trees have got moss on them, they have this element of mystery about them and they seem quite alive and it's the vibrancy of the moss because everything's dying now. We're getting a kind of a uh, very dull palette of colors, but the green moss makes everything stand out. Now I'll show you the branch I'm talking about. It's this one here. Because that mist is coming down the valley, it's a very fine mist now the sun is burning it off. It just makes this branch stand out. I mean, it's nothing spectacular, but it just caught my eye. 
So what I've done is I've set my camera up, I've taken a, taken a shot, two second timer, and you can see on there, two second timer. Now I was quite happy with how this image turned out. It reminded me of my early work when I first came back to the UK. Woodland photography will always be one of my favourite subjects. Every individual tree feels like its own unique character telling its own unique story. Now I talked about the variety of opportunities that Harcastle Christ gives you as a photographer because there are so many different aspects of photography that you can undertake here. So if you want to do long exposure river photography, it's perfect here. You've got beautiful flowing river next to us here. There's waterfalls further up just past Gibson Mill. If you're into woodland photography, well, look no further. Just good luck finding a subject or a specific unique wonderful subject and also wildlife opportunities here the last few times i've been here there's been a couple of herons further up that I've just not been able to manage to photograph there's diverse wildlife here it's it's a, basically a photographer's paradise if you live locally in west yorkshire so yes harcastle crags fantastic place to visit So as I was walking along here, just like before, something caught my eye. Yes, I know a tree covered in green, but this time it's actually covered in ivy. And I think the tree underneath it is actually semi-dead, maybe dead, but the ivy just gives it that little bit of life. And again, because we've got this beautiful mist, it's just coming in on the top. It's just creating this little bit of separation. So, set up my flag. Now the audio gets a little bit muffled here because I'm holding the camera too far away from my face. So I was saying I shot this at 5.6 so that I could get a nice separation with the tree and the background. But I didn't want to shoot it too wide open otherwise I wouldn't have the detail of all the leaves in the tree. Overall I think this was the weakest image that I took during the day. It doesn't really call out to me in any way. There is a bit of separation with the background but compositionally it's quite weak. Just below me, we follow this path down here, the stepping stones, well, the first set of stepping stones. Now, I was fortunate enough to grow up in Tomerden and Hebden Bridge as a kid, and I've had the pine forest in my backyard, like I said in my previous video, but I've also had Harcastle Crags as one of my playgrounds as well. Now, as a young kid, I came here very often with my parents, and I've come here with my friends, and having a place like this to play out in and grow up in it's so good for your creativity and your imagination because it allows you to be in nature it allows you to let your imagination run wild so growing up when you've got stepping stones across rivers and mystical trees and this kind of environment it's so good for you and it's so important that people get out into nature that people get out and feel that connectedness with with mother nature and actually you know take the time to be here because i strongly believe that it, your creativity comes from your surroundings and if you can have somewhere that enables your imagination to actually run wild then you, it's going to be so beneficial for you in the future and i think that's why i'm drawn to these kind of places because it brings out that artistic side in me and i will show you now the stepping stones we'll head down there and you can kind of understand that this it's so important to get out into places like this. So I highly recommend coming to Hardcastle Crags if you're close by or you're not so close by. Find your national park, let your imagination run wild and get your children out in nature. Let them feel connected. area. I mean, 
mean, it's fantastic, but what a place, you know. Like I said, growing up here is, it's a privilege. It's so good to have this. And uh, it just gets me so excited when I get here because that inner child seems to come out and I still want to run across, but I, I won't do that anymore because I know I'll probably slip and break my leg. But, oh, what a magical place and what a feeling to be in these surroundings and to appreciate what we have in our backyard. I have this urge to rush to try and get onto the other side because that's where the mist is. Obviously, because the light is penetrating the other side, it means that there's no mist there. But on the left-hand side, there's so much. So I'm kind of eager to rush and get out there and see if I can find this really nice subject and separate it with the mist. But at the same time, I don't want to rush and miss any opportunities that I might see here. Now, I'm really fortunate at the moment. There's hardly anybody here. In fact, I haven't seen a single person. So. That's quite rare for this place, so coming here during the week early is, is quite good. So I, I should make the most of the opportunities of it being quiet and appreciate everything that's here right now. Maybe, hopefully, I'll find a really nice subject to photograph. So I think I found a composition that I really like and I'm just waiting for the light. I've already taken the picture, so We'll see how that turns out, but I'm just going to wait a little bit longer and see what happens. Now, there's a little tree here that's framed in between this tree, this tree, and the tree behind it. And it's just jutting out to the left. Now, I've got my camera set up. I've gone for a square composition, but I'm just waiting to see whether or not the light changes and just penetrates through like it did before. Now I wish I could go back in time and just readjust the composition of this image. I really like the balance of the youth and the age, the old trees surrounding it and with the light in the background. This image tells a story, but unfortunately the composition is too heavy on the left hand side and distracts away from the main subject. Well I've waited quite a while to see if the light will come through like it did when I first got here. And I've probably been here about 20 minutes. I just had a really lovely chat with a gentleman who's walking by with his dog and the light still hasn't changed. So sadly, I'm going to move on from this area and see if I can find a different subject. I have taken a few images. They look okay. So I'll see how they look in Photoshop and in Lightroom and see what we can do with them. See if I can bring out some of that contrast with the leaves, getting a little bit of light on the first shot. So, but we'll move on up towards the mill and see what we can find. Now, just as I got up to Gibson Mill, I turned around and there is an absolute stunning light coming through. And it's casting these rays of the tree, separating the light and causing beautiful rays of light to come through. So I've just quickly set up my tripod and taken a couple of images. I put the long lens on the 24 to 200 because this 24 to 70 wouldn't reach. And there's a bunch of people behind me, so I'm having to film this and it's a little bit awkward, but do you know what? I don't mind because that light up there is absolutely unreal. Don't know if you can actually see what I'm showing you here, but just here, there's a tree and it absolutely looks fantastic. Every now and then there are just little moments in life that make me smile. The light here was absolutely unreal and I was so happy that I was able to capture this image. I went for a black and white image in the end because it just really amplifies the contrast between the light and the dark. Fantastic little spot in the heart of Hardcastle Crags, Gibson Mill. If you need coffee, they have coffee. And if you like oat milk like I do, they have oat milk. But if you're traipsing around here and you need a little break, in the middle is Gibson Mill. Now the mill's been here for well over a hundred years. Uh, I do believe there is a museum on the inside, but it's not open today. I think I could be wrong. I probably should have done my research. 
But inside Gibson Mill is a lovely little cafe. They do food, they do coffee, they do tea. And it's the perfect little spot to just take five minutes and enjoy the surroundings. The river runs through here. We've got a beautiful little bridge. We've got some toilets over there and a little outhouse building, which it looks quite picturesque. And we've got some more stepping stones, but unfortunately they're not actually uh, usable at the moment because I think they've been damaged due to their rising waters. But it's a fantastic little spot to have five minutes just to yourself and great time to have a little bit of coffee. How amazing does that look? Ah, so just when you go past Gibson Mill, literally you stumble across this. Now, I photographed this twice uh, this year, once at the beginning of the year uh, and once at the back end of autumn. And the first time, oh, I owned an ad, but the second picture that I got, I was really happy with. It was back end of autumn, all the leaves were really red and vibrant. I think it might have been dry and it just had that it had that wow factor and I was super happy with how the image turned out. So I'm going to flash that image up now. And here you can see it just has that mystical vibe to it and the colours add to it. The only thing I was a little bit like unhappy with was the amount of motion that I got from the exposure with the water. I wish in hindsight that I hadn't exposed it for as long as I did because the water is too, too creamy and milky and I wish I'd gotten something that was a little bit less fluid like that and so you could actually see the motion of the water a little bit more but I'm not going to photograph it there because it's actually quite foggy and it's just I, I I don't want to overdo this this little area so but if you get yourself up here check it out it's a beautiful place for a picture and it's just an amazing environment to be in okay so I actually changed my mind I actually decided to come and take a picture I, I walked a little bit up after I'd put the camera down before and I was just looking and I realized I really like the fog that's hanging above. So I've opted to bring my camera up. Uh, I shot it at F11, try and get as much detail as I want. I'm not gonna focus that because I just, I just don't want to spend the time doing that. But because I've shot it at F11, it's allowed me to open up that shutter speed a little bit and slow it down. So it is getting a little bit of the motion in the water, but uh, I'm just a sucker for these environments because it, it, it does look special, it does look magical and yeah, I'm super happy with how this is possibly going to turn out. Now this ended up being my favourite image of the day. I got so lucky with the conditions, the light that was coming through and illuminating the fog in the top that was hanging just above the waterfall. It just made it all look magical and I was really, really happy with how this image turned out. Well, I think with that last image, I'm quite happy. So I'm going to actually wrap it up because I've realized it's actually getting quite late. And this is my problem. When I get out into the woods, I just get so distracted and I get so in my own little zone, but I forget, like I haven't had my lunch yet. So I'm going to wrap this episode up. But what I will do is I'm going to do another episode on the back end of the crags that lead up to Blake Dean. So many people come here, they get to Gibson Mill and they turn around and go back down to Hebden Bridge. But the back end of the crags, which goes up from the Gibson Mill all the way up to Blake Dean, offers some absolutely fantastic scenery, walkways, photography opportunities. So I might cover that. Well, I will cover that in another episode, but I will wrap this up because I think I've got enough content today and I'm, unha I'm pretty happy with the images that I've got. So if you do enjoy the content, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel grow and it helps me do more of these. And if you do want to see more of my ramblings, more woodland photography and just general chit chat of me going, you know, talking and rambling, hit the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, you'll get notifications when my new episodes are coming out. So stay tuned and hopefully we'll see another episode soon.